Democrats. Senator Colin Mason believes JCAB Industries in Tamworth could still be in the running for the $6 million Australia Post contract. The contract for the provision of postal vehicles has been let to an English firm. Australia Post's letting of the contract to the English firm has been the brunt of much political and union criticism. It's been stated that up to 100 jobs could be lost to Tamworth. The Australian Democrats are the latest to take up JCAB's cause. Senator Mason calls the decision outrageous. Now, I intend to find out, by the way, of questions on notice in the Senate as soon as the Parliament resumes for the budget session later this month, just why that order went to the UK and just what the Labor government is getting at and, and, and why it has, in this case, turned its back on a viable local industry and a large one in a regional centre and turned its back on a development which would have created jobs in Australia. I think that's absolutely inexcusable. As for JCAB, the company is still hopeful the contract may come their way. JCAB is presently in receivership and under present conditions it will probably take the company two years to trade its way out. The Australia Post contract would have been a welcomed shot in the arm. Oh, well, it would have increased and, or improved our viability, I feel, and uh, it would have probably speeded up the process of uh, working our way out of receivership. And while Peter Botfield is pleased with the support his company has been receiving, it's fair to say he'd much rather see some interest from Australia Post and the Federal Minister concerned. The Moree Drive-In is playing host to an unusual visitor. A fully grown male pelican has decided to make the drive-in his home. The pelican only arrived at the drive-in yesterday, but already he's made himself right at home. He now rules the corridors inside the proprietor's house, and owners Mr and Mrs Stenholm have had to obey to the pelican's stern warnings of dominance. Mr Stenholm found the bird in his backyard being harassed by dogs. He quickly came to the bird's rescue, and that's where the story began. So we've brought him up to the cafeteria, and he's sort of taken the place over. I think we've given him the... Uh, name of His Majesty. He seems to wander around as if he owns the place. He's certainly at home now. Oh, I say so, yes, my word. What are you going to do with him? Well, that's the question, Peter. I don't know. What do you do with a pelican when you've well, landed with one? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how to feed them, how you look after them, or whether they can be even kept in captivity at all. I well, I'd say you probably have to go out looking for frogs and fish tonight. Well, it seems like we might have to do that. We've tried him with a bit of wholemeal bread, and he's certainly not into the health kicks, I can see that. <laughs> Although it may be uncertain as to what to feed his newfound feathered friend, Mr Stenholm is hopeful that the next movie to be screened at the drive-in is, you guessed it, Storm Boy. We'll be back with more 98 News right after this commercial break. The hairdressing salons of Monsieur Richard and Monsieur Alex were remarkably similar. The customers they attracted, the hairstyles they created, even the coffee they served. Then Monsieur Alex began serving Makona, and soon all of Monsieur Richard's customers became his, which surely proves a clever dick is no match for a smart Alex. Makona, why settle for less? Everybody loves sunlight to brighten up the day. So pure, mild and gentle, it doesn't waste away. Everybody loves sunlight on healthy, glowing cheeks. That fresh smelling sunlight, I value that's a treat. Everybody loves sunlight, it just can't be beat. Show me the souffle of the most. Show me how to be the perfect host. Show me what to put with a chook. The flavor's monumental when you cook with continental. Just watch how fast all the food disappears. Continental. You're showing me great continental ideas. Continental recipe book. Now on special offer in your local supermarket. You know, in a country town, everybody pitches in and helps. That's the idea behind a credit union. Australians helping one another with money needs. You can save with them for high interest with security. And you can borrow at low interest for cars, home improvements, or any worthwhile purpose. Credit unions are like our country. Everybody pitches in and helps. So why not join a credit union now and make Australia strong? It makes good sense. Join a credit union. It makes good sense. Ring now. Electricity consumers in the Oxley County Council area could soon have a 24-hour, seven-day week emergency electrical service. 
This follows the first step in the extension of emergency hours by the council. From today, the council's emergency electrical service will be available to consumers from 6am to 10pm Monday to Friday. A new control centre to cater for the extended hours has been opened at Port Macquarie by Oxley Council Chairman Alderman Bill Walker. Consumers in the Maclay, Hastings and Camden Haven areas will benefit from the new service. People from those areas for the cost of a local telephone call can ring in between those hours and uh, seek information as to possible blackouts that are planned for the ensuing days or to uh, request appliance repairs or to uh, report outages at that time. They'll be dealt with by the council staff personally uh, immediately. Will it mean quicker service for breakdown? There'd be no doubt about that. The number of consumers in the council area has grown from 37,000 in 1980 to 48,000 at the present time. Alderman Walker hopes that this initial extension of hours will continue to grow and become a 24-hour, seven-day week service. Accommodation at the Moree Police Station has been expanded because of increased police numbers in the area. Police officers have moved into their new premises. Work on the extension started on the 18th of September last year. It became necessary to expand the accommodation when the station went 24 hours. The increase in staff had to be catered for. There are now 29 officers at Moree. The extensions include new licensing, detectives and inquiry officers, as well as the expansion of the traffic room. A new communication room has been built, as well as two juvenile shelters and a charge room. The extensions are not finished as yet, although the staff have moved in. Only a few minor jobs are left. There was another international rugby match in the north today. An Irish team from the University College of Dublin played New England University at Armadale. The Irish team, playing not in the green but in the blue, beat UNE 31 to 16. University of New England started well with a try by Albert Armstrong to take an early 6-0 lead. But the stresses of yesterday's matches took their toll. Five of the university players were involved in matches at the All Black Spectacular in Tamworth yesterday and the Irish team led 18 to 6 at half time thanks to some excellent tries by Brian Sweeney. The game was one of five in Australia for the Irish College. They've won three and lost one. They play their last match in Brisbane on Sunday. Team member, Irish international breakaway, Derek McGrath, says it's been a great tour. It's been a very exciting tour, very enjoyable. We get a great look at of Australia. I mean, when you're living in the British Isles, Australia is such a faraway place. So to get over here is a great opportunity for everybody, you know. Market watchers are still looking keenly at the beef market. Its fluctuations have caused many graziers to start cropping, as Ted Hebblewhite reports. Thanks, Neil. Yes, the market proved today to have a lot of strength behind it. Beef producers are now speculating as to how long the demand can be sustained. One of those who has been watching the movements in the industry for some years is George Reeves of the Bureau of Agricultural Economics. I think the beef industry is headed on a slow upward path. We've seen cattle numbers drop by uh, 10 million over the last 10 years. I think we're at a turning point and I think that we can see cattle numbers increasing from say 22 million now up to around about the 24, 25 million by 1988. Well that's pretty unexpected since so many beef producers are diversifying into wheat and sheep at the moment. Not all that uh, unexpected. We've seen um, beef prices for example increase by 37% over the last two years and we're expecting a further 13% uh, increase over the next 12 months. Uh, in contrast, we're uh, seeing a, we're, we think that the wool market will remain fairly flat and that there's been a downturn in, in wheat prices. Well, the Cattle Council's done a survey that's been interpreted as showing that consumers are turning away from red meat consumption. Now, is that actually proven as far as the Bureau is concerned? I don't think it is proven at all. Um, the Cattle Council, I, I don't think, even came out with that uh, particular finding. The Bureau is doing, at the moment, a major study of a thousand consumers throughout the country, um, actually looking at their meat purchasing habits and how they spend their budget. And we hope that uh, by the end of this year we'll have some uh, fairly good results on that. Dr George Reeves in Canberra. The Queensland Egg Marketing Board has reduced the price of eggs to consumers. The decision comes hard on the heels of reductions in the price of eggs in New South Wales. The Minister for Agriculture, Jack Hallam, said today that the action by the Queenslanders proves eggs were overpriced. Any fear 
that the strong demand in the beef market was on the wane yesterday was dispelled in northern sale yards today. Prices pressed ahead as strong as ever as the yards were selling. At Glenninus today, there were 2,500 sheep, 1,200 less than the previous sale. The market was firm for heavy lambs, but stored lambs were dearer under grazier competition by up to $2. Of this total, 264 were ground sheep in half wool. Merino, bon Merino boners in full wool sold to $8. At the Gurindai yards today, there were 675 good quality cattle that continued to sell for better rates, 160 less than the previous sale. Those bullocks were up four cents, the young cattle eight cents on the stronger market. Females forged ahead five cents on last week, with the average for the yards being 99.5 cents or $369, and the average weight of cattle in the yards was 371 kilos. At Baraba sale today, there were 520 fat cattle in the yards, 260 stores. Prices strengthened 10 cents for some pens and 15 cents for others on a stronger market when compared with those sold at Barabar a month ago. The females sold for stronger rates also have as reached 105 cents. The 4,000 plain quality sheep in the yards with those woolly lambs in half wool and the ground sheep in two thirds wool. In a moment, more clear sunny weather ahead. This amazing new drop will save you money. It's new, double-strength sunlight. Two bottles concentrated into one. New sunlight gives you twice the wash-ups, but you pay nothing like twice the price, so you save money. And with new sunlight's new nozzle, just one squeeze gives the little you need for a fresh, sharp sunlight clean. Try new double-strength sunlight, the amazing new drop that saves you money. More grocery sorcery from Foodmaster Supermarkets. Conditioner and shampoo for you from Babe. 500 mils, $1.79. Oh, Wizardry. White Wings family recipe cake mix varieties. A wondrous 65 cents. A top buy from Topwise laundry powder. One kilo, only $1.59. Alakazam, chum in a can. 700 grams, a magic 55 cents. Foodmaster Supermagic Supermarkets. Equip 84 with the Commonwealth Development Bank, August 21, 22, 23 in Canada, New South Wales. The biggest ever, open 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Well, it's been another beautiful winter's day in most of the north. There is a lot of water lying, however, on the western plains, but it's slowly drying up. There was a little cloud over parts of the north, but no rain was reported. The temperatures along the coast, first of all, 20 was recorded at four centres down there. Overnight temperatures were between two and six degrees. Up in the northern tableland, 17 was toppered in Burrell, with the temperatures overnight between minus one and plus one. Over in the slopes and plains, top temperature today was 18 at Narrabri with the overnight temperatures between 3 and 4 degrees. Down in the Hunter, 18 was top at Scone and Newcastle with the overnight temperatures between 7 and 8 degrees. Satellite photograph taken today was completely clear of cloud of any consequence. There was some lingering over the Southern Alps where some showers and only light ones are expected. The rainfall in the July period on the northern end of the slopes was the third wettest on record with a mean for the whole district of 154 millimetres. It was the second wettest July on record with 139 millimetres mean for the southern end of the district. On the northern tablelands, they had the third wettest July with 141 millimetres. On the plains, they had the second wettest July on record with 162 millimetres. New individual records established at northern setters were at uh, Bendemeer, 
with the formal record established in 1904. At Tinga, the record broken was established in 1971 and at Inverell in 1874 when records were first taken. Synoptic chart at noon today showed how the high had asserted itself over the centre of the continent. Winds were light, but the weather settled. By nine tomorrow morning, the high is expected to have moved further to the east. Winds are expected to be light, with them um, coming in from the west and the southwest. A prominent cold front is expected to move across the Western Australian coastline tomorrow. It could generate a further cold southwest change at the end of the week. The forecast then in detail for the hunter Cold night, fogs, cool to mild day with a sunny periods tomorrow and a top of 21 at Newcastle. Mid-north coast, a cold night, mild, mostly sunny day tomorrow with a top of 22 at Kempsey. Northern Tablelands, cool to mild day with sunny periods there, light winds and a top of 17 at Inverell. Slopes and plains, cool to mild, mainly sunny day with light winds and a top of 18 at Moree. Here are the tides for Foster and Crescent Head and Port Macquarie. Tomorrow the sun is expected at 6.44 a.m. and a set at 5.21 in the evening. So it's expected to be cold tonight, followed by a cool, sunny, clear day tomorrow and Thursday. Here's Neil again. Thanks very much, Ted, and that's all for now. Our next bulletin, 6 o'clock tomorrow night. Until then, a very good night.